A motor uses a wire to raise a block, as you can see here. Base of the block takes 0 0.49 seconds. This is good info. To raise up at a constant speed. This looks important. And during this time, the wire has a strain. Another keyword here. And the young modulus. Wow, let's combine a few ideas here now. Young modulus, right? Okay, block has a weight, 1.4. Alright. So we need to calculate the cross-section area of the wire. I think the only clue we have here is the Young Modulus and Strain. Because Young Modulus has E, is the Young Modulus, that's a stress over strain. And the stress here is force per unit area. So let me rewrite this as strain times area. So let's plug in everything we know. Okay, Young Modulus, 2.2 .2 times 10 to the 11. Force, ah. It's a force pulling on this wire. Ah, if you think of it, the block is a point. This block is really heavy. So that is also the force. I mean, it's the, it's the force on the block, but the block is also pulling on the wire. So I'm going to extend it all the way and say, this is the weight. Okay, so that'll be the force. So we go back down here. Let me copy that. 1.4 times 10 to the 4. Strain. What was it just now? 0 0.0012 as a ratio. No units. And lastly, area. Okay. So this one is pretty straightforward. You press the calculator. You should get about 5.3 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay. Two marks means one mark for final answer. One mark actually comes from your equation of knowing your young modulus stress and strain formula. So in case you ever get stuck or you don't know how to start, at least just write the equation that you know that's related. Okay, next. Find the increase in GPE of the block from its, for the movement of its base, okay, from X to Y. So we go back up here. You see how the, the block starts up here? From X to Y means it's going to go all the way up. So what's the change in GPE? Okay, when you see the word GPE, you should click in your head straight away that uh, GPE or E potential is MGH. But you're looking at the increase in height. So a better or more accurate way is to say the change in EP or GPE is related to a change in height. So I add the triangle right there. All right. Mg is given the weight. So that would be 1.4 times 10 to the 4. Now the change in height though, they didn't really give it to us. This here is our change in height. Not much info there. But... They did give us a constant speed uh, moving up of uh, 0 0.64. That's our V. Did it tell us how long it moved? Oh, it did! So we know the time also 0 0.49 at a constant speed is T. So if there's no acceleration, it's a throwback. You want to find the distance travel is velocity times time. So in this case, the height travel will be the constant speed times how fast the thing is slowly moving up. Okay, so we're going to use this and plug in down there. Alright, so remember H here is a, sorry, a side note here. This is going to be our velocity times time. So velocity is 0 and the time taken is 0 0.49 seconds, slowly moving up. And that's where you get your GPE, or about 4390 joules. Final answer usually you can write as a scientific form, which means 4 point, it's one number and a dot, 4.4 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 10 to the 3. Okay, so that's our energy here. One mark. Oh, this is three marks. Okay, one for final answer. 
One is for our equation. They're very generous. You write mgh, you get a mark. And lastly, for our distance is velocity times time. How do you find the distance? Okay, let's continue. Now we come to a bit of power and efficiency. A motor has an efficiency of 56%. Calculate the input power as the base of the block moves from X to Y. Okay. How do we efficiency? Okay, so imagine this is the motor. And somehow there is a way that you can change some input power. Probably electrical. You press on, there's electricity. And then you can change that into a power output, which is mechanical, GPE. Change in GPE. Of course, on the way, the, your, your motor might get hot. There might be energy losses, friction in the system, all these things, and that's considered power loss. So efficiency here, you want to compare input to output. And it looks like your output here is 55, uh, sorry, 56%. So about half is lost. Okay, in A2, you will learn how a motor can convert electrical to mechanical energy. But that's A2, next time. Okay, so what's our, what's our output power? The thing moves with a certain speed, right? So here, our output power, we can use... We can use energy change over time. We can also use a force times velocity, which is actually really the same thing. Force is here, velocity is h over t. So let's go with force over time. All right, so force, just now was a force. You're trying to pull this block. So 1.4 times 10 to the 4. And the constant speed, v. This will give us a value of 8960 watts. But we're not done yet. We want to find the input. This is the output, what comes out uh, in, in the form of uh, mechanical energy. So we're going to do one more step of working here where your output over your input times 100, the ratio uh, is 56%. Okay, so let's see what it is. Output is 8960. Input, don't know what that is. Uh, 56 over 100 and you get a very very big number and that's my 1.6 times 10 to the 4. Now in the alternate scenario sometimes they may ask you to calculate the input power and find the output. So for example if it was electrical energy going into the motor you can calculate it with things like P equals to IV or things like that. These you will learn more in the electrical chapter uh, in AS. So if you haven't learned that, stay tuned. Coming soon. Okay, three marks. One for final answer, one for the power equation actually, and one for calculating. What is your output power based on the info? All right, next. So the base of the block now has a uniform deceleration of magnitude 1.3 from level Y until level Z. So calculate the tension of the wire as it moves from Y to Z. Okay, wait, let's go back to the picture first. Let's go up, 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 up some more, up some more, up some more. Where is Y to Z? Ah, this part. So here we are going to be decelerating, which really means you are slowing down. The bottom part, you are going to move with constant speed. So you're not getting faster, you're not getting slower, it's just... You know. So okay, now I have this in mind. The leaf is moving up, okay? Slowing down, but it's moving upwards. Okay, with that in mind, let's go and look at the question. Find the tension in the wire as it moves from Y to Z. Okay, there's something very tricky here. Something about deceleration. So... Okay, let's draw the block. Let's draw the block. This is the block. The block is moving upwards. Slowing down, right? Decelerate, man. Deceleration means to slow down. 
your speed is moving slower. But decelerating though, what does that mean? It really means your acceleration is in the opposite direction, downwards. So you're accelerating down, but you're moving up. Okay, it's like you throw a, a ball upwards. Throw it up. It's moving up by slowing down. Which also means, if you want to compare the forces, downwards force has to be a little bit bigger. This is, let's say, the uh, weight, mg. Yeah. And your upwards force may not be as big. That's why you are decelerating. Okay? Now, the next step is, whenever you see all these arrows pointing up and down, you got to choose... Where is positive, where is negative? If not positive, negative, we just, we just cannot. Okay, so for convenience sake, I'm going to choose acceleration as my positive. Anything that points down is positive. Positive. Uh, anything that points up is negative. I choose the system. Okay, so I'm going to write it at the side. In this question, I define down to be positive, up to be negative. Direction matters here. Okay, now we are ready to start the question. Okay, when you see all these force, force questions, first thing you should do is draw a free body diagram like that. Just a block and all the forces acting on it. Okay, let's go. So Newton's second law, net force equals to the mass times acceleration. There are two forces acting on this object, so you got to add them in. First force is W, positive W. Sure, let's include the sign. Plus the other force, which is negative T. By our system of definition up there. Remember, we define up there. Okay, and then we have M times A. Now, acceleration in our system is already positive, so you don't need to put a negative sign. Okay. All right. So, let's plug in the values. Weight given to us. 1.4 times 10 to the 4. Uh, minus tension. We need to find a tension. And then the mass. We don't know the mass, but they did give us the weight, so we can rearrange a bit where mass is weight over our 9.81. So let's write that out. 1.4 is the weight. 9.81 is a constant. And the acceleration or rather, in this case, deceleration is 1.3. Now note, in this system, it's not negative ah, because I chose downwards as positive. You can choose the other way. It means you flip this upwards and downwards. And it will still be correct. Okay, so by this case, my T should be a negative value. Okay, if you include a negative, sure. If you don't have the negative, that is okay. Should be about 12144. Or round it off to 1.2, 10 to the 4. So final answer is 1. Uh, if you set up the Newton's second law equation with the correct forces, that's 1. And if you substitute the correct values in, that's another 1. So these C1s are for slightly different marks over there. Next. Oh yes, I should write here. Negative sign, if you get it, it's okay. Alright, next, the graph. So the base of the block at level x, y, z is at all these times. Sketch a graph to show the variation of time of the distance of the base from level x. So I'm going to redraw the diagram a little bit. We start with x right at the bottom. Then you move up to y. Okay, this block is still moving up. Lah. And then up to z. Did we stop at z? Oh, there's a clue. Did we stop at z? You see here? The block moves. Where is it? From level y until block stops. Stops at level z. That's a pretty important clue. Okay, so let's label that. You kind of stop moving here. And how about the, you know, a deceleration? Okay, deceleration is happening here. And for the first part here, you're going to be moving at constant speed. 
and D here is the distance from the bottom. So let's say I go up, 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 until here, that's my D. Okay, so first part, constant speed means I'm increasing at a constant rate. So my distance, oh, you tr try and draw a straight line, huh? increase at a constant rate. This, should, this part should be a, a straight line. Because a constant speed also means a constant gradient of, of a dt graph. Okay, so right here. This is speed is your gradient of a dt graph. So right here. Gradient is constant. You can go as far as you want though, but we need to go until at least y. So let's make this line a little longer. Honestly, you can just pick any like distance. Okay, I'll choose this spot. Take a ruler and draw a straight line. Oh, that's not bad. Freehand drawing. Okay, what happens after that? We are decelerating. Means you are slowing down. Which means your gradient should be decreasing. Gradient decrease because when you decelerate, your velocity is going down. So gradient also go down. So if you want to draw this graph, it, uh, it's going to look something like this. Okay, but we need to make sure we try to oh, make a nice curve that ends up flat. Now, why must we end up flat? Because you stop moving. So when you stop moving, it means at the end of the day, your gradient here should be flat. No more velocity. You're not moving any further. The D should not increase anymore. Just constant forever. Because you're not moving. Okay? So that's two marks here. One mark is for the first part here, straight line. What does a straight line mean? Constant speed. Because it's distance. You're moving further away at a constant rate. Then this is the part where you have a curve and you must end up flat at the last point here. Okay? Or horizontal. The graph should end up there. Okay? So this is another mark for this part. Okay, so you, you kind of have to slow down for graphs and you try to think logically how to imagine that block slowly moving up. If you can't imagine, draw. Drawing is a good practice. That's why we have all these diagrams here. Okay, that's all for this kinematics question.